Hey y'all, Megan here. Thank y'all so much for checking out this week's video. So if you didn't see the video before this, I will link it up here somewhere inside of this video. Um, but basically I showed you guys how to create your own mock-up photo, um, like with your own design in it from just a plain picture like this using a website called ipicky.com. Well, today's video is going to be pretty similar to the last one, except um, we're going to switch gears a little bit and use a free um, online version of Photoshop called photop.com. Um, so if you have ever wondered how to do this on Photoshop or Photop, whichever one you use, um, definitely keep watching because I'm going to show you exactly how to do that today. So give me a big thumbs up if you like this video. Also hit subscribe because I will be sharing more stuff like this in the future. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. I will close these two things out and I will go ahead and open up Chrome. So this time we will go to photop.com. So obviously this is a lot different than iPicky. Um, the first time I ever used it, I'll be honest with y'all, I was really overwhelmed because I really had no idea what I was doing, but it's super easy um, to make mock-up photos on here. So I will show you guys how to do it kind of the same way we did it um, on iPicky using a JPEG file, and then I will show you how to do it if you've got um, stock photos that are whatever .psd that can only be used on Photoshop. That's really easy to, um, like I said, that really got me for a long time, but don't worry, I'll show you exactly what you need to know. So in order to open up your stock photo, you'll go up here to file and then you'll hit open and all of your files will show up. So I will continue using that same photo that I used for the last video. So it's under here and um, this is exactly how we did it on iPicky. I'll show you that first so you don't get too overwhelmed. So I'll just select the JPEG file and voila, there we go. So then you will need to open up another file with your picture on it. So in last week's video about iPicky, um, I explained to you guys the difference between the JPEG and the PNG file. So if you are, if you have uploaded a PNG or JPEG into Photop and there's just this one background layer right here, then you will need to make sure that whatever picture you're trying to put in here is a transparent PNG file. So I'm gonna go to open and here is a .png. So I will open this up. And when you open it up, it opens up into a new tab. So again, this checkered background means that it's a transparent background and when you put it into this photo, it won't have that white outline around it. So in order to get this right here onto this photo, you're going to go to your design, left click and drag, drag it onto this picture's name. Then you can drag it to wherever you want it to go in this picture. And what I like about Photop versus using um, iPicky is this little red line. So when I left click on it and move it around, this little red line shows up to tell me it's centered. And that's a lot better than just eyeballing it like you do on iPicky. So this looks good the way it is right here. Um, if you like the way this looks, then there is a step you need to take before saving this picture, which is a little different than iPicky. Um, you'll go up here to the layer option because there's now two layers instead of just this one background layer. Um, so you'll go up to layer and then you'll hit flatten image. When you flatten the image, 
it does the same thing that it did on iPicky. Um, it just flattens both of these layers into the background layer. So you can't move your design around anymore. Um, but I mean, I like the way this looks. That's not an issue. So to save this photo to upload it to Etsy, you will just hit this save selected layers as a PNG button. And hopefully this goes pretty fast. Um, okay, so then it's going to ask me where to save it as, and it just gives you the PNG image format, but basically just a PNG is like a high quality, um, it's like higher quality than a JPEG, so, um, you won't have any issues uploading it to Etsy if it's a PNG versus a JPEG. Um, I'm not going to save this, but if I were to save it, then I would just rename it and hit save, and it would save to my Dropbox, and that's that. Pretty easy. So let's say you have bought some stock photos and instead of them being a JPEG or PNG file, they are a PSD file. So doing it like this is a little different um, and it did kind of scare me at first, but it's really easy. So I'm going to open up the same picture but the .psd file. So when you open up a Photoshop design file in PhotoP, and I'm assuming it's the same way with Photoshop even though I've never used it, you'll see here there's two different layers. There's this background layer and then there's this your design here. So to get your photo to here Put your mouse on this little transparent background, double click it, and it pops up a new tab that says your design here. So then go back to file, go back to open, and at this point I'm pretty sure you can use um, a JPEG if you wanted to and not a PNG. So. I like using PNGs better just because it's automatically transparent um, if you save it from Canva as a transparent PNG file so you don't have to worry about anything going wrong. Um, so I'm just going to open up this PNG file again. And you're going to do the same thing. So you're going to put your mouse on your design, left click, and drag it to your design here. So... Once you've saved it, once you've like centered it, just like that, where those red dots are, I mean not red dots, red lines. So once the red lines have told you that it's centered, then you will need to flatten this. So again, let me show you how to do this. So with a PSD file, double click this transparent background then a new tab will show up open up whatever design you have that you want to put inside of here and then left click drag it to the your design here tab make sure it's centered oops that is not centered Okay, so make sure it's centered, and when it is centered, then go to File, and Save Smart Object. Once you've filed and saved it as a smart object, then go back to here, and it is in the picture, and you can move it around. So if for some reason, you don't like the way that this looks right here, you can continue moving it around and kind of messing with it. So once you get this to where it wants to go, then you'll do the same thing. So you'll go to layer, flatten image, 
and then save as a PNG file. So basically, anytime you open up a .psd file, I'll show you an example. So anytime you open up a .psd file, I'm pretty sure there's always going to be this background layer and then another layer um, with the transparent background, aka a smart object. So I hope that I explained this very well. I'll show you again just one more time with here, with this one. Um, yes, I really want to close it. Okay, so for this one, with a smart object, hit this transparent background, double click it. It'll bring you to this. Then file, open, and I will show you this time with a JPEG. Left click drag this to here. Now, if you're using a JPEG and you need to resize it on a Mac, all you need to do is hit Command Option T. If you have a Windows computer, hit Control Alt T and it should do the same thing and you can resize it. Now, if you want to keep the same dimensions and not make it, um, not like stretch it out and make it look weird, then hold down the shift button and do the corners in. So once you've gotten this to where you would like for it to be, then hit file, save smart object. And there we go. Easy as that. And then Hit layer, flatten image, and save as a PNG. So I really hope that these options that I showed you on Photo P made sense and didn't overwhelm you. Um, if you need to watch this video multiple times, then definitely go back. Um, and if you've got any questions, please, 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 please leave me a comment. I definitely want to help you out if you have um, no background with like Photoshop or Photo P and just don't know and are still confused by anything in this video or don't know exactly how to do anything, um, let me know. But like I said, I hope you guys found this video helpful. Um, if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you subscribe while you're here. Give me a thumbs up and stay tuned because I am going to come out with a video next week on exactly how I make my listing photos using Canva. Um, with Canva, I haven't found a way to put your design into mock-up photos like this, but I will be showing you some cool stuff to do with Canva as well. So stay tuned for that. In the meantime, I hope y'all have a great week and I will see y'all again soon.